In today's how-to video, we're going to feature the Canon T7i. We're also going to go through the procedures of what to do at checkout when you pick up your equipment to ensure that you have all the equipment that you need and it is in operating condition. Once we do that, we're going to show how to assemble the T7i with the kit lens, the battery, and the SD card. Once we have the camera assembled, we're going to show how to mount it onto a tripod. After that, we're going to go through the optimized settings for capturing high definition video. Let's get started. All of the equipment that you will check out through the Media Arts Equipment Room, the mirror, will be found in protective cases. The cases are labeled and have barcodes for our inventory purposes and to be able to track them. The other function of all these cases is to protect the valuable gear that's inside. So remember to always carry your gear within the case that you take it away from the mirror in so that it's protected at all times. That's, that's a really good way to think about why we have these cases and it'll keep the gear in good shape for the next student. So with that, we're going to start talking about what's inside the cases. The Canon T7i is pretty much your workhorse of sorts for your introductory film classes. It's a DSLR, a digital single lens reflex camera. One of the things that's really important before you leave the equipment room, when you check out your equipment, is to check the contents of the case. All of our cases have a specified case content, and you want to make sure everything that's in here or noted on here is actually in the case, all right? Or you could be charged for that. If something's missing, be sure to let one of the mirror staff no, and we'll make a note of that and make sure that you're not responsible. Okay, so on the case contents card, there's the camera body, the 1855 millimeter lens with cap, two batteries, a battery charger, an SD card, and a manual. And we want to make sure all of that's here. So the first thing it says is the camera body. So we have the camera body. It has a body cap. That's an important ingredient as well. Protects the sensor. All right, we have the 18 to 55 millimeter zoom lens. It's the kit lens, okay, with a rear cap and front cap. That's important. We have the battery charger, two batteries. Batteries aren't always charged. You want to make sure that if you have a shoot, you want to let your mirror staff know to charge those batteries before picking them up so that they can be charged. Otherwise, they probably won't be. We also have the SD card. That's found in a little slot inside the foam in this particular case. Um, and then you have your manual. You can always refer to this when you, you have maybe a question that you can't remember the answer to. So we do have all of the components that are listed on our case contents card. Now the next step would be to build the camera. Now that we have checked and make sure everything is in the case, let's build the camera. So once again, I'm going to pull my camera body out, okay, and I'm going to take my lens out as well. I don't need the battery charger, I only need one battery, and you'll know the battery has a protective cover. We're going to stick that back in the case, okay, and I'm going to pull my SD card out. I don't need its protective cover, so I'm going to just take the card out by itself. All right, first thing I'd like to do is put the battery in. You'll notice on the bottom of the camera, there's a little door with a hinge that lets it open up. The battery only goes in one way, and you can see right here that it gets accepted in, and a little gray piece helps to keep the battery in place. Then we close the door, all right? On that same side of the camera is another little door. You press and pull towards the back of the camera to open it up. The card only goes in one way. There's actually an icon here. We don't normally have to tell students, but some students 
when they're out in the field and it says it cannot record, it's maybe because there's a little lock on the card preventing that. So make sure that slide switch is in the unlocked position. The card goes into the camera, only one way, never force anything in. Once it's accepted, close the door and shut that as well. So we have the battery in and we just put the card in. You'll notice that the kit lens has a front cap to protect the lens and a rear cap. I'm going to take the rear cap off and put it back into the case. Sometimes on set we might move things around, but I have come to find if I'm going to take something off, I'm going to stick it back in the case so it has a home there. Now I'm going to take the body cap off. You push and turn to the left and it releases the cap. You'll notice that on the lens there's a white dot and there's a white dot on the ring of the lens mount. We're going to line those two dots up and turn the lens clockwise till you hear a little click. Okay. We just put the battery in, we put the SD card in, and we seated the lens to the camera body. Now we can remove the lens cap. The camera is completely put together at this point. Now that our camera is built, it's time to put together our tripod. In the field, or in our industry, we call this our sticks. Okay, there are several different manufacturers, several different styles. Today we're going to be demonstrating an e-image uh, two-stage tripod with pan handle and a fluid head. So again, we have to take the contents out of the case. You'll notice in this case here that it has actually a little safety strap that holds the legs of the tripod together and in place while um, it's traveling around. Okay, so we're going to take the tripod out, all right, I'm going to put the case over here for right now. I'm going to set this down behind here, but one of the first things you want to be able to do is just take a visual inspection that it has the plate on the top of the tripod. This has specialty feet, I'll show you that in a second, um, but I need to get it up here so you guys can see it. So I'm going to loosen the legs just a little bit and I'm going to move them up Then I'm going to lock them down. You can't see it right now but on the back of the tripod there's actually a level. And we'll talk about what that means. It's a bubble that's going to make sure your horizontal lines are horizontal. Okay and we have a pan handle on the back which when we stow it we turn it in and I'm going to open that up. Okay and then I'm going to Hand the head around to you and then tilt it, okay? There are several different buttons and knobs on every tripod. A lot of students and professionals alike I've seen just like to muscle the, cam muscle the head on the tripod and that really ruins the gears and the fluidity of the action of pan and tilt, okay? So we want to make sure that not only is it level, which it isn't right now, I'm going to bring up this side a little bit so my bubble's right in the center. There's a little knob on the left side of the head that allows me to do a tilt action moving up or down on a steady axis. Okay, and I can lock that back down. On the back of this tripod there's a knob and if I turn it to the right that's going to give me more drag, more resistance through that action. If I turn it to the left, then it's going to be a little more, fl more fluid, less resistance, less drag. Okay, that's dealer's choice. If I want to pan, I want to make sure this top knob here is open. That allows me to move from left to right horizontally on a stable axis. Okay, in order to get the tripod connected to the camera, we have to remove the plate. On the right side of this particular head is a release knob and then this is a safety button, this gold button, that allows me to pull the plate back towards me, releasing it from the tripod. On the bottom of your camera you have a 920 thread and we're going to simply thread this screw into that 
And once you get your own set of tools, you'll need some kind of nickel or dime or something, preferably a little flathead, that you can actually tighten that screw. You're only as stable as that plate is to your camera. Then just like we took it out, we're gonna slide it in from behind, push the safety button, and then we're gonna tighten the knob on the right-hand side to secure the camera to the sticks. Very important that it's integrated and stable. There's no movement once you have it mounted to your tripod, okay? That's mounting your camera to your tripod. Now that we have assembled the camera, mounted it onto a tripod, let's go over the settings for optimizing our HD video shoot. You'll notice as I tilt the camera down, on the top of the camera are different buttons and icons. This big dial is for all the different shooting modes. You'll notice that we're in M. M stands for manual. This gives us full control over the camera. That's what you're gonna want. There's off, on, and a film icon. For video shooting, we wanna slide this all the way down to the video icon. You'll hear the shutter open and the camera turns on. Now that our camera is turned on into the video mode, we have opened up the flip out LCD screen and we want to get into the deeper part of the camera by navigating its menus and sub menus. One of the first things I want to do is hit the menu button on the top left back side of the camera and I want to go over to the right icon where it says display level settings. I'm just going to touch that to navigate to it. The guided display level settings are the default, but I'd like using the standard. We're gonna choose standard by going in and selecting that on the menu. It's gonna switch back over. Now when I hit menu, you'll see how it's a little bit different, all right? It's a preference thing, but I think we should all be in the same mode when navigating the camera. Because these cameras are used by several different students, one of the first things I like to show is how to format or erase the SD card. So in the wrench icon on the first submenu, you'll see format card. We select that and just simply say, okay, make sure that you have gotten all of your media off of the card prior to formatting, of course. Now that we have formatted the card, let's dive deeper into the settings so we're set up for success for our shoot. To jump out of the menu, we hit the menu button on the back of the camera. Now the camera sees what it's focused on, and in this case, we have another camera just for display purposes. In order to get into the deeper menus on this particular camera, there's a quick control key, and you'll see it in the top right-hand corner of the frame touch that, you'll see you have all these different parameters that you can go in and control. This menu goes away pretty quick. So jump in there and the first thing we're going to talk about is the frame rate. In traditional film practice, you shoot at 24 frames per second. On our digital cameras, we're shooting at 2398P, the P stands for progressive. So dial that in if it's not already, and you can choose that at the bottom. You can see that you can shoot at 60 frames per second, 30 frames per second, and 24, okay? Now, let's go into what's called shutter speed. Shutter speed, to mirror traditional film practice once again, you multiply the frame rate times two to set your shutter speed. So the shutter speed for 24 frames per second should be 48. On this camera, we got to get it as close as we can, and that would be 50. You can navigate the different shutter speeds by hitting the left and right arrows. This is a fraction. It's one over 50. So the shutter's opening 50 times per second. The next thing is very important. This 5.0 refers to the f-stop, which controls the aperture that controls light into your camera. 
the smaller the f-stop number, the more light comes into the sensor. The higher the f-stop, it gets darker. It closes down the aperture. Watch when I go up to 11. It's getting darker and darker, okay? If I wanna open this thing wide up, we're gonna keep it all the way open at 5.0. You'll notice if I zoom in on my lens, the f-stop changes. So make sure to make a note of that so that doesn't happen to you. I typically don't use the zoom. I will track and move my camera in. Higher end cinema zoom lenses remain the same f-stop throughout the range of the zoom. The next thing we want to do is talk a little bit about ISO. ISO is International Standard Organization. It's a artificial way of producing more light into the sensor, especially in low light situations. I tend to stay low as much as possible on that ISO. Um, if I can, I want to be down to 100, never auto, okay? But you can see at 5.0 on my stop, it's still a pretty dark image. We want it to be properly exposed. So I'm going to push up a little bit. Still a little dark at 200. 400 is looking pretty good. I think I can keep it at 400 here within the lighting conditions that I have. And that's important because all sets will require different lighting conditions and you need to set your camera up accordingly. All right. <music> Now that we have set our frame rate, shutter speed, f-stop, and ISO, let's talk a little bit about white balance. White balance is very important. All lights have a color temperature measured in Kelvin degrees. Indoor ranges between 2800 and 3500 Kelvin degrees. Outdoor, 5600 to 6500 Kelvin degrees. A big disparity between the two, so if you don't have your white balance set properly, your image might look a little orange or a little blue. So let's get into this camera and figure out how to set up our white balance properly. We're going to go back into the quick control. You'll notice that we're on a custom white balance with this icon here, okay? But you can also see that we have auto white balance. We also have daylight, shade, cloudy, all the presets, tungsten, fluorescent, and flash, okay? So in order to set your white balance properly, you can use a preset, okay, based on the color temperature or the location that you're in. Or what I would prefer is using the custom white balance. So select custom white balance, then you must turn your camera into the still camera mode by just sliding the toggle switch to on. Then I'm gonna open up that shutter by hitting the camera button on the back. I'm gonna fill the frame with a white card and then snap a photo and then I'm going to go into the menu and go to the third sub menu of the first camera icon there and I'm going to navigate down to custom white balance choose that and it's going to go back to that last photo that I took which is a reference photo and hit set then choose OK and now when I toggle back to my image, my whites are really white and based on the color temperature of the lights coming in. We just custom white balance. Be sure to switch your camera back into video mode before shooting. There's a couple other menu functions that I want to show you here. So you'll notice that while we're in this third tab of the first camera menu, that picture style, you can choose different predefined color profiles. For us, we're going to lock it in at neutral. This will give us more leverage in post for some color grading. One of the other functions is, is the audio on this camera is not very good, so we'll always do secondary audio capture, but it's important that you do have the sound recording on, okay? And I just leave that in auto mode, so it has a reference signal or what we call scratch audio in order to be able to sync our higher end audio. And everything else looks pretty good here. One last thing I want to show you is that as I pan the camera around, we talked about the variable zoom lens, but on these little kit lenses, 
you have a stabilizer. I always leave that on. It helps with some camera shake, but because of the camera so small, it's a little hard to hold this without any kind of shake. But then you have auto focus or manual focus, a little switch on the lens. We're going to put it in manual focus for our shoots, okay? Just make sure that that's in the manual focus location. Also, on the back of the camera here, you have other dials that can control the same functionality as we can with the touch screen there, okay? We can, on top of the camera, if I tilt all the way up, and I'm not sure if you can see this, but on top, we have an ISO button, and you can see that takes us to the ISO menu. We can go into a display mode and turn different things on in our display as well. I tend to use mostly the touchscreen on this particular model, but I also have a, a need at times to navigate the camera with my buttons on the back. One last thing I want to show you is how do I pull focus when I'm pretty far away from something so that it, it's really pristine. On the back side of the camera, there's a plus button here. If I hit that, it'll bring up a target. If I want my target to move, I'm going to use my 12, 3, 6, and 9 buttons on the back to move that. And I want this to be right on the gears of the lens. And then if I hit the plus button, it'll digitally zoom me in. And then I'm going to pull focus to that particular location. And then I'm going to hit the plus button again to go back in a little tighter, tweak that focus just a little bit, and pop back out. Now I know that my image is nice and pristine. Usually I'll use the talent's eye as a reference for pulling focus. Last but not least, the record button. There's a record button on the back of the camera that will start and stop the recording. Very important. Make sure to leave yourself a little pre-roll and a little end roll just in case you need it. So now that you're wrapped up with your shoot, it's time to break everything down, get it back into the cases, and take it back into the mirror. So the first thing I'm going to start with is breaking down the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my case so it's ready for all the pieces. You'll notice that I put the body cap and the rear lens cap in my uh, case. Remember, I just throw everything in there so it has a home. That's really important. All right, so to get it off of the tripod, we're going to loosen the right screw knob on the side of the head and then press the safety button here and slide it back off. So you pull it out of the tripod to the back, okay? Not all tripods, like I said before, are exactly the same, but there is a method on releasing the plate from the head. So to get the plate from off the camera, we're going to take our little trusty tool and open it up. Mine happens to be a key. And then I'm going to loosen that back up. A common thing that we find is students will leave the plate on the camera. You want to make sure it gets back into the proper place here. And slide that back in, lock it down, the plate is back on. So we have a card inside of here, a battery, and the kit lens. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is actually take the card out. I'm going to push on the door to open it up, push on the card to eject it. All right, you probably, if not already, will need to transfer the media off of the card. You can do that onto your own personal computer, onto your own external hard drive, or if you're in the mirror, you can transfer this at the time of your open edit appointment onto the server. I put the card back in, then I'm going to slide it into that little slot inside the case. So we've taken the card out, I'm going to close the door. On the bottom, again, there's your battery. That same gray button that holds the battery in is what you do to release it. You pull that to the side, the battery comes out. Pretty cool. All right. Always make sure that you put, if, if your case has the pl plastic protected um, ends on it, put that back on the batteries, okay? Those go into this slot with the battery charger. So it should look something like that. All right. 
Last but not least, we have to get the lens off of the body. You'll notice on the left side of the front of the camera is a little button. That button gets depressed and you turn it counterclockwise to release it off of the camera. Right away, I'm gonna put the body cap on. Do not turn this up or you're exposing your sensor and potentially um, some damage or dust can get in there. Turn that to the right, okay? And then I'm gonna set that in the case as so, okay? Last but not least, the rear cap on there. I've already put my front cap back on after I was done shooting and that goes into the case and all of your pieces are back in nice and safe and sound. Then we're gonna close this down and get that ready to bring back in for check-in. All right, let's go ahead and break down the tripod now. We're gonna go ahead and open up our case so it's ready. Inside the case, there's some foam packing and some, but not all the cases have the same stuff in them. It depends on the tripod that you get, okay? This one actually has two straps for securing the tripod inside the case um, for keeping it nice and tight and not rolling around in there, okay? One of the first things I do here is I'm gonna lift the spreader to release some of the tension off of the, the tripod itself. I'm gonna loosen each of the legs right here. This is a two-stage tripod. Not all the tripods, as I mentioned, are the same. I'm gonna circle it and work it down. Once all the way down, I'm gonna tighten those legs up. And I'm just gonna pull it up here so you can see the rest of this. I'm gonna pull that spreader in, okay? That allows my legs to come together all the way. The pan handle is sticking out the back still. In order for us to stow it properly, I'm gonna loosen that and just rotate it in. Lock it back down, okay, like so. Now, inside the case, I'm gonna put the head towards that foam packing to protect it even more, right there. And then I'm gonna take these straps that are in here and lock this into place to keep it from moving around while we're carrying it back to the mirror, okay? It's always important to try to take care of your equipment. It'll prolong it, especially your own personal gear, but more importantly, our equipment, so it's ready for the next student. Then I'm gonna zip it up, put the handles together. Now I have my tripod, I have my camera, I'm ready to check everything back in. That will wrap up our T7i how-to video. Thank you for watching.